Um, I'd like to introduce our next speaker, which is one of my co-chairs, Dr. Peter Ree. Dr. Ree is the uh, Chief of Trauma, Critical Care, Burns, and Emergency Surgery, and is Professor of Surgery at the University of Arizona. Um, he is the uh, Vice Chair for Clinical Affairs for the Department of Surgery and holds the Martin Gluck Endowed Chair. Um, he went to uh, uh, college at uh, Georgia Tech, uh, studied uh, medicine at U.S. Health Sciences, uh, uh, university, um, has a Master's of Public Health from University of Washington. He has a couple of other degrees. I won't bela belabor them, but since this is the day after Veterans Day, I'll tell you that uh, Dr. Rhee is a retired U.S. Navy captain following 24 years of active service with m uh, numerous shipboard uh, deployments. He served in Afghanistan and in Iraq uh, during Operation Enduring Freedom and Operation Iraqi Freedom. He's a fellow of the American College of Surgeons, and uh, he is one of my very, very close friends, and I am honored to uh, introduce Dr. Peter Rhee. Okay, we're going to talk about a case. Um, let's see, we got uh, time, and uh, you know Ronnie. He just you just talked to him, and then we got uh, Sydney, uh, trauma director at uh, Maricopa. I think most of the audience also know him. He's uh, recently also been uh, asked to be the vice chair at uh, Maricopa. So this should be a fun time period. So we got one national and one uh, famous local guy here. And I'm going to present a uh, case that I had uh, at Trauma m and And this will be interactive, so get your cell phones out. We'll be texting uh, answers. Uh, this is how we usually start off. So it's a typical time period of us, for us, uh, two calls. We do about 20 a day, variety of cases. Can you guys see that? Okay. Barely, man. Barely. All right. Um, all right, here's the patient. 68-year-old. He was driving down the highway in his pickup truck, pulling a flatbed trailer, got a little bit out of control. A fishtail threw him out uh, off the highway. He and his wife were coming in. And uh, blood pressure started to become a little low on transport, so he was made a trauma red, which is our highest activation. His uh, hypertension, hyperthyroidism. So, uh, can I have sound? So uh, he's alive. Uh, those are medical students in the corner. I was explaining to them a, a screaming patient is a live patient. When they stop screaming is when I worry. So airways intact, breast sounds are equal bi bilaterally. He's hypotensive on a monitor. And we are going back to using manual cuff pressures whenever we have uh, hypotension. Those are medical students. We have a nurse in that corner down there getting a manual pressure, life-saving maneuver. So, you know, we've got a little bit of um, things going on here, as you can see. Blood pressure is 90 over 60 on manual cuff, so that is a real pressure. And on secondary survey, he's moving all forwards. He's answering questions. He's not paralyzed. Uh, he has pain in the back of his chest, and uh, abdomen seems fairly normal, and we had uh, fasts done three times, pelvis is stable, we can rock him, move his hips around, definitely no pelvic fracture or femur fracture, and he has some back pain, as you see, with a little bit of abrasion on his left side. He's got a head lack, it's not that bad, it's not the cause of his blood pressure being low. Uh, this is his chest x-ray. Not dramatic, no major hemoneumothorax. Airway seems to be okay. You can see it's a little lighter color up at the top. Pelvic film, not that horrible. 
So let's start here. Hypotensive patient. Can we have our first interactive? Okay, so if you like the first answer, uh, did they get to see that question or? Vote now, vote often. <laughs> okay, so can we show that simultaneously? I thought we were showing that simultaneously. On Okay, you can pick your answer. When he shows the next slide, that's what you'll text. Go ahead and show those back up. Two liters of lactated ringers, colloids, blood, l arm blood, give pressors. Can you give them those codes again? <clears throat> so whichever one you picked, you can start to punch in those texts and we'll see. I think F was the DPA, was it? What was F? I'm gonna have to take a picture of that, I can't remember. <laughs> okay, all right, let me go back to that question. Okay, two liters LR, what do you think, Ronnie? Well, you know, my first question is, uh, uh, why is he in shock? If he's in shock, that's my, I still don't have an answer to that question, so that's going to be, I think we really ideally need an answer to that question so we can do appropriate therapy. Uh, I but, agree, but we have to do something about yeah. his volume, so what well, do I mean, you think? I mean, I would like to know yeah, the answer know. too. Yeah, I know you would. Uh, Everybody says to give LR. Would, I would probably give, would if I was going to give anything, I would give blood. Sid? Yeah. Agreed, it. but going back to your three FAST exams, did anybody look at the volume status of this patient with their FAST? Yes. And? We couldn't see. You... <laughs> a blind man can see. I know. We, we looked at the FAST. <laughs> FAST showed a bunch of gray stuff, but we couldn't see any blood in the belly. But so, IBC, right heart? It's there somewhere, but we can't <laughs> find it. I would agree. I would start with blood, not knowing you know, what's going on. sometimes you can't so, see the stuff. So I'm really starting in my head. That's where I'm actually really start. I'm going to start with my head, not the patient. But you bleeding. Have one. He has a head. <clears throat> bleeding, tension pneumothorax, pericardial tamponade, neurogenic shock. Okay, so, so I'm going to go through that list again. Shock. He doesn't. He's moving his arms and legs. So he he's doesn't not have neurogenic shock. Chest X-ray. You saw the chest X-ray. He's not bilateral pulmonary death. contusions. Right. And a widened mediastinum. Right. Probably blunt thoracic aortic injury. Okay. That doesn't necessarily give you hypertension, right? I agree with right? you. That's right. Okay. That's why I'm. That's why I'm still up here troubled with what's going on. So what would you do in the meantime? Everybody here wants to give LR. We already said what we'd do. We said we'd give some blood. Okay. I don't know what, you, right. what you'd do. What's DPA to? Is that diagnostic perineal aspirate? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. That's a good, that's a good thought. So chest x-rays, like you said, questionable wide mediastinum, multiple right-sided rib fractures, uh, contusion, maybe aspiration, scapular fractures, and the pelvic x-ray, as you saw, nothing really too remarkable. So CT is ready. Okay, pressure's 103. What would you do here? Hurry and go to the CT scanner. <laughs> go to the operating room. He is hypotensive. He should go there and do something. Go to the ICU. They have coffee there. It's not bad. Stay and give blood. Go to lunch. I'm kind of hungry. Stay in the trauma bay and give more crystalloids. Okay, can we have the second interactive question? So your thoughts, Ed, what would you do? Well, the paradigm has definitely changed. These days, as long as you're accompanying that patient, uh, we'd probably go to CAT scan if all else is negative and start to worry about cardiogenic, neurogenic, um, retroperitoneal. Well, it's not neurogenic, he's moving his arms and legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah we know how you are in this panel <laughs> discussion, so we've got to be open to all possibilities. Agreed. Okay, so... so 
what are the chances of him having a neurogenic shock if he's, you can feel everything that you're touching on him and he's not moving his arms and legs? Very low. Okay, I agree. All right, so let's scratch that off the list. Okay, you scratch it off. Okay, so, so airway, breathing, and CT scan, right? That's what they Absolutely. do in Maricopa. Absolutely. Okay. I, I, I'm just saying I'm going to weigh in, and I agree, although I might, I don't know. I mean, you've trying to take what's inherently this chaotic situation, make it more orderly might secure his airway before going to CAT scan. That's, that's, he but says, I'd go you to know, CAT you're scan. talking to him, he says, my yeah, back hurts, my yeah, back hurts. I know. Okay. And, and yeah. I, want, I also want to know what his uh, lactate is or what his base deficit is. Four. Really? Yeah. Okay. So I'm to definitely going to CAT scan then. Okay. But he's hypotensive. Uh, so what? No, it's so, relative. I mean, I'm hypotensive right now. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> they, you know, you come and verify my hospital and they say if, if I take a hypotensive to the uh, you know to the CT scanner that the, the guy's gonna die there right well, call me as Let's, long as you're present your OR is ready I'm there but I can't help it, this hypotension. You're good. In, in, in your in your in your trauma center I'm sure you can get them there safely monitor them and and CAT scan them within and, five minutes and watch them die there right well, I mean, you could just also open a chest and CAT scan. We do I mean, it all the so, time. so you can just do something. I mean, what, I think there's some things we want to know. Okay, so you don't want to go to lunch? And he better not arrest in CAT scan. If he does, you're in big trouble. All right. Yeah, now, now I'm going to be are. in big trouble. So he, this is kind of his timeline. You can see his blood, blood pressure over time. It says, you know, you can't see, you're too old, but uh, 85 over 53, 100 systolic, 110. 120, 130, so we're giving him blood. Okay, we turn off his lactator ringers because that's poisonous things. And then, you know, we've got a bunch of fasts. DPA. And every time we do a fast, it's normal. DPA. Okay, we're gonna, we, we, we say, we want to get the DPA. What that is, a diagnostic peritoneal lavage. For those people that are extremely old, you might remember that. We don't do that in modern day medicine anymore. But that's where you put a catheter into the abdomen and see if there's a lot of blood because you don't trust to fast, okay? So his pressure's normal, okay? So what we did was they said, I got another guy I need to scan. I said, go ahead and scan that guy because, you know, I'd like to get him a little bit of blood because we, you know, we said give blood and my nurse said, okay, but it takes a little time to give blood, right? It doesn't happen immediately. So sure it Yes, does. it does, come on. <laughs> Come on, it does happen immediately. Like, boom, blood, Belmont, done. Exactly. Okay. So in Tucson, it said blood, and it said yes. And so they, we have, you know, on cross-match blood, and they're going to give it. But it actually takes a little bit of seconds, <laughs> four, six seconds, seven seconds. It takes time to get, you know, hang it on the pole, right? So he's, he's well, normalized now. So we take him to the CT scanner, okay? You'll get your answer here. <laughs> Because, I mean, I know you can't do anything without scanning the guy, God's sakes. So, what you see is a CT scan showing that uh, things I pay attention to is his aorta. It's normal. He doesn't have a torn thoracic aorta. All right. He still doesn't have neurogenic shock. He doesn't have a hemoneumothorax. He's got some broken ribs. There's his liver coming into view on your left. That seems to be okay, no blood. On retroperitoneum. He's got a burrito in his stomach. His spleen is still there. Yeah, looks normal to me. Yeah. Kidneys, he's got two of them. His vena cave is a little flat. Not horrible. And on his left flank, he's got a little bit of a hematoma, but you know, down here near his buttocks, looks about the same on each side. Okay, so, you know, his head is relatively normal, okay? <laughs> and uh, he doesn't have a hemoneumothorax, okay? Bilateral pulmonary contusions. Mm -hmm. Bilateral pulmonary contusions, he orders okay. Um, not too impressive. You see his vena cava there? Mm -hmm. If you look at his right kidney going in to the vena cava, it's a little flat, so he mm -hmm. you know, corresponds with his hypotension. But where's he losing in blood? You know, that arrow is pointing to a small little fracture. Um, and Boy, that yeah. hematoma on the side had a little tiny extravasation. Mm 
Yeah. Okay, so that's all we find so far. Good thing we didn't do a DPA on him. Yeah, it would been horrible. It would have been horrible, right. So this says the same things that I just said. We don't need to go and read all of that stuff. But one thing that's weird <laughs> is that he's got these adrenal hematomas. It seems like our radiologists read that on every single patient nowadays, yeah. right? So, so, so he could have bilateral adrenal and have adrenal insufficiency. Yep, he could have yep, that. Yeah, he's, he, that's what he's doing. He's dying from adrenal insufficiency Hey, well, right he now. could. Yeah. I'm not saying he's dying. He doesn't seem like he's dying. Yeah. His base deficit's four and his blood pressure 90. Yeah, it could be that's neurogenic shock, That's what mine shock, is right, right now up yeah. here. It's still neurogenic shock. Okay, so there's his labs. He's acidotic. He's, there he is. Oh, 4.3. That's, that's elevated. Yeah. Very good. So he's in the CAT scanner, and as you know it, towards the end of the scan, now it's 50 minutes for, since his arrival. He's, he's starting to get hypotensive. What would you do here? Go to the operating room. Close his head lack. Go to the angel suite. Embolize his scalp. Go to the ICU, they have coffee there, you know. You could still is, do DTA. His abdominal exam, do, do you don't think you're even told us what his abdominal exam was? Completely normal. Benign, totally Benign. non tender. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Go to lunch. Angio. You'd go to Angio, what would you Angio? His pelvis. His pelvis his, his, is normal. That, that uh, retroperitoneal even have a hematoma. fracture. I know, but he's got that extravasation there, and that's actually the most, if you look at all the findings, that was the most prominent of the things. Okay. Sid? I'd put a binder on him just to see if I could compress it. I don't know that I'd run an angio for that one. Idea. Not a bad idea. Yeah. It's a good idea. Trauma Bay, so the OR calls you and says, your lap coli, <laughs> the patient's asleep, okay? And now the anesthesiologist is really getting mad at you and says, okay, you're doing this again. Your patient's asleep. Where are you? I, I, you know, did you call the residents? No. Did you call anybody? We called you. What would you do? Send your fellow? Your fellow says, I can't do the timeout. The only the attending can do the timeout. Now nah, I'm spending the time with this guy. I'm going to the unit with him. Okay, your, your patient's asleep. Do you wake up your lap coli from yeah. last night that you, your, fellow, your compadres didn't get to? Um, uh, yes. Call in backup. <laughs> call I mean, we have yeah. a backup person. It's, we can call in someone. We should already call them in. And this okay. is why you shouldn't be doing lap coli's at the same time as you're doing all this stuff. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> It's 2 o'clock Saturday afternoon. When would you like to do it? Monday morning. It's Monday yes. morning. When would you like to do it? Now, we would have another surgeon in doing that So case. we call the surgeon. The backup's coming in. The junior can't find him. So, you know, <laughs> someone's got to start the case. The medical <laughs> student says he'll go with you. <laughs> and so you give blood. Now, this is my, my backup tending. Sure. My backup tending is uh, examining the patient again. There's my junior and my fellow. I'm in the OR starting a lap coli. Not that big a deal. He's still awake. No alive. wounds back there they're looking no, at? No, no spears, no, arrows. No gunshot wound or no. anything like that? Now, now, an hour and a half, blood pressure's normal, kind of. And that's my uh, ED attending is asking about his thyroid medication. He doesn't have a PE. No PE. So is TSH a 60? TSH is uh, whatever, yeah, whatever that, what's TSH stand oh, for? Oh, so it's really high. Okay. Okay, so after the scan, patient received another three units of blood, an FFP, and the trauma I fellow said we says, should have intubated him in the beginning. Yes, you did, later on. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So, <laughs> said, but you know, if, if you watch the tape, he says, you know, my, why can't you breathe? He goes, my back hurts, my back hurts. So, but my fellow's uh, uh, worried at this time period, so go ahead and, and intubate him. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do the usual rapid sequence intubation. Um, I come out of the OR, and uh, it goes in fine, no problem. So, you know, uh, my attending took over uh, the lab coli for me, and I came back down to see this patient. And then, so we intubated the patient. And then, uh, why are you still downstairs? Well, after the intubation, uh, he brains down, and then now we can't find his pulse. This guy who was talking to you, his wife is next door. She's bleeding from her scalp lac too. And so, you say, it's just probably from the rapid sequence. We're giving blood. Angel's called. So, mm -hmm. 
How about pericardial tamponade? So, so fast is negative. I heard fast is negative, but uh, we fasted him again four times with an echo. Component. He's about to get a left thoracotomy here, so I know that's what you're about to do because that's what he's going to. He's heading that way. You know that, huh? I do. You do. You do. Okay. He's going to have pericardial tamponade so, or something like that. So, you know, that. it's a long two mm-hmm. minutes, but he comes back. <laughs> okay. He gets, he, he comes back. They're about to get that stool for me. What did I'm they short. intubate him with, their RSI? Hmm? Propofol? Some of that clear stuff. No, just the usual sucks and accommodate. <laughs> and they gave him about that they much of him. one drug and about that much of the other drug. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of shop do you run? So, you know, we put the abdominal binder, like you said. Andrew's on his way in. Okay, so here we are. He died after the rapid sequence intubation. We got him back once. Uh, we got a chest x-ray. EKG now shows maybe a little ST depression. His normal, first EKG was normal. Okay, so he didn't have a heart attack when, when he was already in shock for the first time. Echo? Echo, we called them in, they'll be there tomorrow. Uh, we put in the central line, and he doesn't have a hemoneumothorax, trachea's midline. Uh, we already know about his aorta, and he still doesn't have neurogenic shock. Okay. So, okay. so, 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 so I'm, I'm, so I'm going to say, so it's rare, but he could have blunt uh, cardiac injury with uh, myocardial dysfunction from that. That would be, he also is 68. He could, he could be having a, Myocardial infarction. Have you ever heard of that one? That I myocardial agree. infarction. I, I completely agree. He's you 68. Must be heart. Yep. It's hypertensive. Right. We gave him nine no. units of blood. Yeah, why so much blood? Because he was hypotensive. What's his hematocrit with that? Is it 60 or is it 20? It is, his hematocrit is, is about 30. So he's bleeding? Yes. Yeah. Yes. He's bleeding somewhere and you can't find it. I, can't, no, I know where it is. Okay, you know where it is. You yeah. didn't, though. It's not in his belly, chest, legs. It's got to be in the back. He didn't do this. He didn't have a nine-unit blood loss from his scalp. And I asked you whether you want to give pressors. <laughs> Sid, now he's starting to get hypotensive again. As soon as the blood slows down, he gets hypotensive. His hemoglobin is 10, okay? Yeah, so he's After bleeding. Nine is that, is that blood. your impression, your expert opinion? He's bleeding? Absolutely. He's bleeding, but you said he's we having a heart attack. We need to find where the bleeding is. He's having is. a heart attack. You said he's having a heart I mean, attack. We're trying he's 67 to find the bleeding. You're not helping us find it. He's having it. a heart attack. He's dying from a heart so attack. So your troponin came we're back. Your EKG is done. His troponin is now elevated because I did CPR on him. Didn't you see me do CPR well, on what him? What is it? I didn't is see it. Is it like 0.5 or is it like a million? It's 0.5. Okay. Million. So what do you do here? Mo pressors? Mo blood? We. Oh my gosh! God, We'd what? go to the OR. I mean, ultimately, if, if you, we're going to wind up going to the operating room and doing something, we'll basically take out his gallbladder. What do you want to do in the <laughs> OR? You want to open up his back? It does nothing in the belly. There's nothing in the chest. I asked for an angio an hour ago, man. <laughs> he's coming. He's coming. He's, on, he's hey, almost I'll just, there. I'll just remind you from the American College of Surgeons he's, that the orange book again. says you got a 30-minute response time to angio. <laughs> And the, there's, a, there's the, a reason why we say that. The angel says he's there. They're there. They're ready for you, him. Don't you have a hybrid room, some fancy smancy thing? Yeah, You've but Vasco won't, won't let me use it. Vasco won't let me use it. Angel's there. Yeah. They're going to be set up. They said they're ready for you in five minutes. What do you want to do? Angio. Okay, we did. I said they'll be ready in five minutes, but he's gotten hypotensive. Heart attack? What are you going to do? He's getting hypotensive now. <laughs> now. I'd... Get them, you know, if... Pressors? Epi? Yes. What? No, you're going to have Raise to use pressors. pressors. You got them Leave full. Them the tank we'd is full. Him, we'd, uh, come on. We'd give vasopressor, and I would already give him, I would already give him hydrocortisone for his... Uh, okay, we get, we, we go, he got the hydrocortisone. I know, that's not going to do anything. And that's right, didn't uh, You're in the OR. His blood pressure is 50 over 30. We're, we need We're to in go the, the OR. We should have done that DPA that I said earlier, too. He's got no blood in the belly. He doesn't have neurogenic <laughs> shock. Well, based on probability, though, based shock. on probability, you would okay. have to say that on probability, the most likely source for occult hemorrhage would be in his abdomen, it's and not. fast would be wrong. CT scan is normal. Uh, it's true. You don't want to pay attention. What would you do, Sid? I'd be in the OR continuing to resuscitate this guy because if you're going to end up opening him, he's and dead. Out, he's got no blood pressure. Well, you can he has compress his aorta if you. I mean, if you. But he's. 
Butt well, push is 50 right now. Since Mr. Reboa is on the list, you okay. know, may not Reboa. be such a bad idea. All right. We've got to hurry up because you guys are too oh, slow. The lungs. There's your lungs. <laughs> the ARDS is set in. That aspiration pneumonia is terrible. Is All that right. CPR? Yeah, because right. he doesn't have a pulse. Where's your universal precautions? Well, we had... We took it off after we gave him the tetanus an hour ago. <laughs> I can't wear a body condom all day long, all right? Is that him? Is that you? Yeah. Where? With a hat on. He is on. not doing CPR. <laughs> With the hat on. So we did a Ruboa, and then this is his wife saying goodbye to him because he died. Okay, and this whole family, and one of them is the nurse up on the ward. So this is a, you know, we would took this to the M&M. &M. He died slowly over three and a half hours. Uh, is, this, is this anticipated? He came in alive, so I said this is unanticipated. Mm -hmm. You know, we could have intubated him a little earlier. I don't think that would have saved his life. We gave him nine units of blood. He was bleeding. I think he was bleeding in the back. We know for sure he wasn't bleeding in the belly. Mm -hmm. You know, we called IR, but, uh, you know, Still wasn't there early enough. We did put the biter on. We did do the Reboa. It didn't work. It never works in this situation. And when we looked at our data for it, I'm going to skip through this because this is just no time. But uh, <laughs> what we found with our autopsy results and also looking back on it is that the, if you look at with blunt and penetrating uh, trauma, it's a, it's a toss of the coin. You know, it, the indications for it. And this was very frustrating to me that, night, uh, that day. And, uh, you know, I think he, I think after s thinking about this for as long as I did, he bled in his back, no doubt about it. But in, when into he, where in his back? In his retroperitoneum, you mm -hmm. know? That's the only place know. we have because he didn't have what a nine the autopsy show. Yeah. That's absolutely. what we want to know, what so, the real digital scan showed. The autopsy's pending. It just happened a week ago. So, so here's what I think happened. When he got his... Uh, intubation, I think he had a heart attack. Yeah. One of the things, and I'm going to just raise this, I've done it once in my entire career, and I think maybe I should rethink this and we should write a little editorial about this. We used a balloon pump. Back when I was in Virginia, we had a guy who I was convinced, I mean, we did the same thing you did, same workup, and I was convinced, it was a 72-year-old guy, convinced it was his heart, and I called the cardiologist, I said, I'm putting in a balloon pump, come up here. And he, of course, thought I was insane. We put it in, and the guy lived. And it was cardiac, cardiogenic shock. Yeah. So I think that uh, you know, half of the attendings at our m and thought we should have put him on pressers earlier. And I think that normally, if you got a person that you gave nine units of blood to, his hemoglobin is only 10, and you're putting him on pressers, it's not going to help you. But anyway, so we ran out of time. You can't say anything else. Thank you very much. <laughs>